The subject for today's talk is on the training and education of evangelists. Often an evangelist uh, knows that they are called by God and uh, second, they learn that they actually have the gift of an evangelist. If, that, if that's the case, uh, I believe that they then should take some training and some educational courses. But too often evangelists just think that they can open their mouth and the Lord will fill it. And they'll just head out preaching and they maybe have one or two sermon outlines. And uh, sometimes that's okay for those who are disciplined and for those who know they need to study. But for too many, that's, that's what they spend the rest of their lifetime doing. Um, I, I just believe, I'm a fervent believer in education. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that that's true. Uh, years ago we even had our own Bible Institute. Everyone we've worked with, we've tried to lead them in some direction in training and education. So I believe that it's without, without question that the evangelist needs that as much as anyone else that's out there in ministry. However, I also believe that uh, training and education for an evangelist should take a different form than the standard ministerial training that's so uh, prevalent these days. Um, the, the same is true if you're going to be a plumber. Why would you spend four years in college when you could go to a trade school, when you could become involved in uh, a co-op program? So I believe that there's a new model that's needed in training evangelists. And too often evangelists are placed into this age-old model of education that really ends up only benefiting the college to which they attended. So, you say, what would you, what would you suggest for the training of an evangelist? Now, I know many evangelists are listening, and uh, others that are listening who know someone who is an evangelist, uh, put them in contact with our videos and let them follow along some of the suggestions that we've ha we have after we've done years and years of ministry training and mentoring. So here's a, here's a model that I would, I would follow. I call it a, a new targeted model for evangelists. Number one, I think that there are specific college level courses that every evangelist should take. Um, may, maybe a list would be helpful. One would be in the area of theology. If you don't get your theology straight up the road, you'll find that you've led many people astray. So I believe that every evangelist needs solid theological training. And it may only be one or two or three courses, but those will be incredibly valuable to you up the road many years as the Lord leads you. I believe as well hermeneutics is another one. Uh, the scripture speaks of rightly dividing the word of God. Well, if Paul knew it back then, we should know it now, that there are so many uh, perversions of the scripture and there's so many diversions and there's so many cults and so many directions people can go. And uh, this subject of hermeneutics is uh, teaching you how to interpret the Bible. And whatever you read, whatever you're studying, what is the right interpretation? And it adds culture and everything else into that mix. The third would be uh, studying a program that would deal with developing a world view. Too often people have a very narrow, and evangelists have a very narrow view of the world. And uh, probably only until I began to travel to many different countries did I understand the value of having a world view. And part of that came from being a resident in Canada and having much of the world come to Canada. I suppose one of the most multicultural countries in the world. And I began to develop an appreciation for all of the other nations of the world. And it tied in with the message of Jesus that said, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So uh, I believe that you need to take a course, find it in some college, correspondence, otherwise online, and take that, that course that will benefit you in developing a world mentality with respect to the gospel and what it is God's calling you to do, because it may not all be in comfortable North America. 
Another uh, college level course, and I'll just go quickly, is ministerial ethics, how you ought to live and conduct your ministry. Another one is Old and New Testament surveys. So you have a general overall bird's eye view of what the scripture is speaking about all the way through from Genesis right through to Revelation. So that's the, that's the first area I would, I would encourage you to develop some studies in. The second is um, one you can take and find it many different places. One is on soul winning. If you're going to be an evangelist, number one, you are a soul winner. So if you're going to win souls effectively, it, it would help. It would help tremendously in taking a soul winning course. I think one of the most important parts of soul winning courses is that you find how to close the deal. That once you've presented the gospel, you then ask people to receive. And the Holy Spirit then speaks to individuals so that they respond to the invitation. It's like selling a refrigerator, telling people all the good points about it, and then walking away from them. You haven't sold a refrigerator. You've just explained it to them. And an evangelist really, when he takes, she takes a soul winning course, they know how to not only present the gospel, but then to close that presentation by inviting people to accept Christ. Uh, a second one in this area, not only soul winning, but homiletics. That's how to preach. There are so many people who think they know how to preach, but they miss, they miss the target completely. And, and they, they don't present the scriptures, and they don't present the word of God or the teachings of Christ in an understandable way that causes people to respond in a positive way. A third one is take a course on people skills. I remember one of the first courses I took in Bible college years back in 1959 was a, a, a simple book that called how, how to Win Friends and Influence People. And I suppose it was by Dale Carnegie. And I suppose it was one of the most influential books, little paperback thing, still available. But it was, it was a, a course on on personal skills, personality skills, how to how to respond to people and how to be kind to people and, and how to communicate with them effectively. Every evangelist needs that, that type of course. Along with that, uh, maybe a course on what is the gospel. Because the evangelist message is usually very simple, it's very narrow, it's very focused. And to present the gospel, to be an evangelist, all you're doing is winning souls. I mean, that's Oh, I, that's a great thing. But that is your primary focus. So know what the core of the gospel is. Sometimes we say the core of the gospel is in John 3.16, and that's true. So know uh, the core of the gospel, not only how to present it. And then finally, maybe you should study the denominational church, because this is a stumbling block to many Christians, especially in North America and now around the world, where every denomination imaginable has gone around the world presenting their version of the gospel. But tying people into an organizational structure that causes the passion and the light to go out of their lives when the gospel really does bring life and truth. So you maybe need to discuss and, dis and describe and study and observe the denominational uh, structure that the church is in in North America. Well, the third area that I would suggest, and uh, move along quickly, but the third area is how to organize and legitimize your ministry. Uh, people like to have accreditation. I know years ago when we started a Bible institute and a Bible college, people would ask, almost every student would ask, uh, are, are you accredited? Which may, meant and means that they want to know that this has been put together legally and that it does offer them good, um, good value for their, their money and their investment. So as an evangelist, when it comes to your training and education, find out how to organize your ministry properly. At the very beginning, don't wait until you're along five or ten years and you've been doing things backwards and you're not right with the government and you haven't been reporting your finances properly. Learn how to do that. That's, that's part of your training and your education. And the fourth is mentoring. If you, are so, if you are so privileged to find someone who will mentor you, say a successful evangelist, then you are miles ahead of, of others in your training and of your education. And the fifth is network. 
Learn, learn the art of networking, of finding uh, other people who are involved in ministry and involved in evangelism and are evangelists. And I've already learned the pitfalls. I have a, I have a whole video on, on the pitfalls of the evangelists. Um, and someday we'll present that as well. So when it comes to training and education, I'm saying be very careful you don't tie yourself into three, four, five, six, eight year programs in colleges and universities that are there as a business, but they are not necessarily focused on uh, accelerating you into ministry and getting you into your ministry as quickly as possible and as effectively as possible. So I'm suggesting the model that I've just put forward there. Number one is a specific college level courses and take them from those institutions. Number two, find, find studies and subjects or courses on soul winning, homiletics, people skills, what the gospel is, the denominational church, etc. Number three is organizing your ministry so that it's done properly and that it will legitimize you and your ministry in the face of the world that you are attempting to win. Number four is mentoring. Find somebody that's an evangelist that will take you under their wing. It follows the pattern of Jesus. And he, Jesus, was with his 12 disciples. They were under his wing and they followed his teachings and they got their education as to how to do their ministry up the road by listening to what Jesus himself was saying. So mentoring is one of the greatest things you can do when it comes to your training and your education. And then fifth, but not la uh, last, but not least, is that of networking. Find people that you can network with. Join a, an evangelist network somewhere that, again, you have all things in common and you can learn from each other. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you. But one of my greatest, my greatest joys is, is, is being involved with evangelists. But I want you to know that you should be accelerated, launched into your ministry quickly. And the earlier you do it, the better. The quicker you get involved in studying these things and get launched into your ministry, I believe the more effective you can be for the Lord. So, may the Lord bless you again. If you want to follow us on our YouTube channel, it's just under my name, John McDonald, The Country Parson Ministries. May God bless.